The consensus around the internet is that Macs, hardware-wise, are overpriced. Especially when they use the exact same parts compared to their competitors. But, is that true? Today we'll be comparing Apple's lineup of Macintosh computers against Windows computers and see if they compare well at all or not. We'll be trying to figure out whether they're overpriced or not. It'll be lots of boring numbers and me talking. First, let's lay out five guidelines. We won't be comparing a MacBook to a desktop you scraped together off of Craigslist and eBay. That is not the same at all. They are two different devices for two different purposes. But what we will be doing is comparing laptops to similar laptops with similar functions and similar processors. We'll look at relevant ones and not ones that are completely outdated, like the Mac Mini, the Trash Can Mac Pro, and the MacBook Air. We already know those aren't relevant anymore and they're overpriced. We will compare using comparable parts. That means if someone's using an Intel processor, we'll compare Intel, not Intel versus AMD, and we'll use as many of the same parts as we can to get close to what it should be. If we can't, we'll use close alternatives. We will compare them all in US dollars. The reason for this is it would take forever if I tried to do it for every single country imaginable. It would just take way too much time otherwise. We'll compare products using their retail price. Now the argument against this is that you should get the best deal on the product that's on sale, right? But you know, that even applies to Apple products. They go on sale all the time. So it's a very terrible comparison and it's gonna get super convoluted if we just looked at sale prices on everything. So using the retail price is the most efficient way and it gives you a general idea of what this was originally supposed to cost anyway. Well, let's get started with the 13 inch MacBook Pro without touch bar. We'll compare it to three other Windows devices within that same segment, the HP Spectre, X360, Microsoft Surface Laptop, Dell XPS 13, and Razer Blaze Stealth. I tried configuring each device to equal the specs of the MacBook Pro as much as possible, and this is what I got. As you can see, all these devices are pretty similarly priced and are very similarly specced out. The Razer Blade Stealth appears to be an amazing value compared to everyone else, and pricing it the same as the MacBook gives it crazy specs. But as for the other laptops, Apple seems to have priced the MacBook Pro just right. The XPS 13 beats it in terms of a slightly better display resolution and touch screen ability, but the MacBook Pro beats it right back with a much better integrated graphics chip and costs $100 less. So in terms of value, I kind of have to give it to the MacBook. Then the Spectre X360 beats it with touchscreen ability, faster processor, higher storage, and being cheaper by $100. The MacBook Pro retaliates with having a higher resolution screen and better integrated graphics. Overall, the value of the Spectre 360 slightly edges out the MacBook Pro. The Surface Laptop, at a similar price, has more storage and a touchscreen. The same advantages the MacBook had in the last comparison appears again. A slightly higher resolution display and a more powerful integrated graphics chip. It feels like a tie to me. Overall, it seems like the 13-inch MacBook Pro isn't overpriced at all. It actually falls in the middle in terms of pricing compared to its Windows alternatives. But what is intimidating is the high starting price of the machine, which is a bit higher than all the other machines you've seen. So the MacBook Pro isn't overpriced, it's just expensive. The real advantage these Windows laptops have is their ability to be upgraded later on. This is something MacBook Pro owners don't have the luxury of doing. And if you do raise the price beyond the base model MacBook Pro, it gets extraordinarily expensive, and then it's very, very overpriced. Let me say that in plain English. Base model, good. Everything else, bad. Now let's check out the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Wait, oops, never mind. Now let's do the iMac lineup. Here's how I price them. I would try to build a PC on PC Part Picker with the exact same configuration, CPU, RAM, GPU, and everything. The results were interesting. Apple had pretty much three types of iMacs, so I made three different builds for that. Since they use Intel CPUs, I wanted to use the exact same CPUs or it would just be a bad comparison. I'm not using different parts. The purpose is to see if it was overpriced based on the parts Apple used. 
so it'd be stupid to use a Ryzen chip, even if it's better than its Intel i5 counterpart. Trying to make a build comparable to the 21.5 inch iMac, I realized it used a dual core processor similar to the one from the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which means it isn't even using a desktop grade CPU. So considering we can't really figure out the retail price of a laptop processor, I just skipped it and called it inconclusive. Let's just focus on the 4K iMac and 5K iMac and try to make comparable products to them. If you try to make a comparable build to a 4K iMac, you'll actually go way over because the iMac does come with a webcam, speakers, mice, keyboard, and most importantly, the 4K display. These are things that doesn't come with building a PC. Of course, if you have parts already, it'd be cheaper, but we are trying to be as equal as possible in terms of what features you get for your money. This makes the 4K iMac cheaper than if you actually bought everything separately, unless you pick the absolute cheapest parts, then it'd be cheaper, but then it wouldn't be anywhere near the quality of the iMac. The same goes for the 5K iMac. It's cheaper just buying a 5K iMac if you want a 5K display, since the displays alone are $1,300. Is it practical to buy a 5K iMac? Probably not, but cheaper than buying everything else separately. The last product we're gonna look at is the 12 inch MacBook. Comparing that to other super thin and lights, well, it gets decimated without us even needing to look further. So overall, we learned that outdated Apple products are, are overpriced but there are some reasonably priced ones as well, like the 13 inch MacBook Pro without touch bar, 4K iMac and 5K iMac. Of course, not everyone needs every feature built into these devices, but the price is just right considering what you're getting. Could you find a Windows alternative that fits your needs much better than these machines can? Yes, but that doesn't mean these machines are overpriced. They just have specifications that they prioritized over the specifications that you wanted. Just look at our 13 inch MacBook Pro comparison. All these devices were priced very similarly and they just prioritized something a little more than the other ones. If price is what you're concerned about, then these products fit right in line with their Windows counterparts. However, upgrades are super expensive and overpriced. In that case, get something else. The results of all this surprised me. I thought Apple would lose in every single category. It's nice to know that you're not paying the Apple tax on every Apple product. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment, and well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.